Lakes are an essential part of our identity here in Wisconsin. They are vital for our economy, environment, and our way of life. Wisconsin's waters belong to all of us, and it is up to us to protect them. On the surface, lakes are a beautiful view and a great place to recreate, but they are so much more than that. Lakes are thriving ecosystems filled with animals, plants, microorganisms, and other wildlife, including people. But to fully appreciate the complexity of a healthy lake, we need to take a look below the surface. All lakes have essential nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen that are the base of the food chain supporting fish and plants. In deep lakes, these nutrients often stay locked away in the lake bed. In shallow lakes, however, readily available nutrients, warmer water, and sunlight reaching the lake bed combine to create the ideal conditions for rapid plant growth and a thriving ecosystem. However, the delicate balance of this sensitive ecosystem can easily be disrupted. What happens on the land surrounding a lake can have a significant impact on the lake itself. Small lakes and lakes without water flowing in or out of them are more vulnerable than large flowages to the impacts from development. Lakes where many trees are cut down and homes are built close to the water are at greater risk of being polluted and choked with algae. This is because hard surfaces like rooftops and driveways prevent rain from soaking into the ground. The hard surfaces cause more runoff that carries soil and its nutrients, plus fertilizer, into the lake. The right amount of nutrients is essential for a healthy lake, but too much can cause uncontrolled algae growth. If aquatic plants are starved for sunlight or removed, the lake bed and shoreline can be eroded by wind and waves, making the water murky. Aquatic plants and plants on land along the shoreline normally provide food and habitat for wildlife and hold the shore and lake bed in place with their roots. When they're gone, the shoreline becomes unstable and can erode, leading to property loss. A lakeshore mowed to the water's edge can recede as much as 5 feet in 10 years. This is what can happen if we don't have sufficient shoreland zoning or don't apply it. We love our lakes and want them to stay clean, swimmable, and full of native fish and wildlife for our children to enjoy. So what can we do to keep them that way? Lakeshore owners have the great opportunity and responsibility to be stewards of their lake's health. What we do on our lakeshore properties can impact fish and wildlife, shoreline stability, algae growth, and property values. Our actions could cause a lot of harm or a lot of good, and it's up to us to decide. However, one lakeshore property alone can only make a small difference. The healthiest lakes are a result of lakeshore neighbors all working together. Before starting any building projects on your lakeshore property, step back and take a little time to think about what you like to do at the lake. Go for a walk around your property. What is your shoreline like? Deep-rooted plants like trees, shrubs, and prairie plants keep your shoreline from eroding into the lake and provide amazing habitat for wildlife. Where are the other natural areas on your property? Try to keep those natural areas intact and add new ones. If you're ready to start planning a building project, here are some steps you can take to ensure it is lake friendly. First, build any new homes, buildings, or additions as far from the shore as possible to make sure they will be on stable ground over the long term. In recent years, we've had increased flooding and high water levels in lakes. Building or expanding buildings close to the shore could be a very poor investment due to changing water levels and collapsing banks. Second, keep your shoreline natural. Natural shorelines contain a lush mixture of native grasses, flowers, shrubs, and trees that help to reduce and filter polluted runoff and provide amazing habitat for songbirds, pollinators, dragonflies, frogs, fish, and other wildlife. If your shoreline is partly or completely natural, consider yourself and the local wildlife fortunate. A mature native buffer represents many years of nature at work. If you have lawn along your shoreline, add buffers to areas you don't actively use for water access. Natural unfertilized areas can reduce algae blooms. Buffers play a major role in keeping the lake healthy by acting like goalies, preventing excess nutrients like fertilizer, pet waste, and grass clippings from getting into the lake and causing algae blooms. Two to three properties with well-placed native plant buffers are enough to reduce algae growth in a lake by 500 pounds. Once your lakeshore buffer is established, there will always be something interesting to watch. 
Tall shoreline plants will also deter nuisance wildlife like geese that prefer mowed lawns where they can see predators. Geese will swim right by properties with healthy buffers. Third, keep hard surfaces small and capture the runoff. Building hard surfaces means you'll lose habitat where the hard surfaces go. Runoff from hard or impervious surfaces like rooftops and driveways carries sediment and nutrients into lakes. This is why it's important to get erosion control in place before construction to keep sediment from smothering fish eggs and degrading water quality. This runoff can harm fish species like walleye, bass, northern pike, perch, and crappies. Sediment covers walleye spawning beds, cutting off oxygen to their eggs. Cloudy, algae-filled water makes it difficult for predator species that hunt by sight to find their food. Runoff from hot pavement and rooftops increases lake temperatures, stressing fish that require cool water, including walleye and northern pike. Install rain gardens or infiltration areas to capture the runoff from hard surfaces. Fourth, locate septic systems far away from the lake and away from drinking water wells on your lot and your neighbor's lots. In sandy soils, nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen, as well as pharmaceuticals, can migrate over 150 feet underground from the septic system drain field. If these nutrients seep underground into the lake, they will increase aquatic plant growth and algae blooms. Septic systems should also be located far from the water so they do not collapse into the lake. Fifth, leave fallen trees and aquatic plants like water lilies. These plants are vital for holding the lake bed in place and preventing sediment from being stirred up. The plants and fallen trees also provide food and habitat for lake critters, including turtles, frogs, fish, and herons. Shoreland zoning regulations are in place to protect lakes and rivers, including their water quality, fisheries, habitat, and natural scenic beauty. County zoning staff enforce shoreland zoning which regulates building setbacks from the water and property lines, extent of hard surfaces, the placement of structures including homes, sheds, and retaining walls, and tree and plant removal on land near the shore. Before deciding on a location or size of a new building, contact your local zoning office to schedule an appointment to talk about the regulations and what changes are allowed on your lot. Explain how you want to use your property rather than being tied to an exact building plan. Provide and ask for alternatives. Being flexible about your proposed building project can help speed up the permitting process. Your natural shoreline can easily allow room for a dock, direct water access, and all your recreational equipment. A carefully developed lakeshore property is beautiful to look at, provides critical habitat for wildlife, and can reduce algae growth in your lake. Studies have shown that a three-foot increase in water clarity can increase your property value by $30,000. Best of all, native plant buffers create a natural privacy screen without obscuring your view of the lake. Adding trees and shrubs to your property will also provide cooling shade, privacy from neighbors, and a picture frame view of your lake. Achieving this vision of a healthy lake takes cooperation from us all. When surrounded by a stable shoreline of native plants on shore and in the water, and a neighborhood of lakeshore stewards, your lake will be clean and clear. It will be able to support abundant recreational uses and a vibrant community of fish, birds, and other native wildlife, and keep harmful pollution and algae in check. Lakes are our pride and joy. As a lakeshore owner, you are vital to making sure our lakes are healthy for future generations to enjoy. What will you do to protect our lakes for the future? You could build homes as far from the shore as possible, keep your shorelines natural, Keep hard surfaces small. Leave fallen trees and aquatic plants. These steps will protect your waterfront investment and keep our lakes healthy for fish, wildlife, and people. <laughs>